Hi Church, my name is Kristen Thorsness and I'm bringing you today's midweek pause from my home in Bellevue. I was asked to talk to you today about vulnerability. The scripture reading comes from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 13 through chapter 5 verse 1 and I'm reading from the New International Version. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. I don't know about you, but when I watch the news, I'm often overwhelmed. The media is dominated with stories of people suffering from homelessness, refugees, countries without adequate access to COVID vaccines, people struggling with addiction, racist and homophobic attacks, ill treatment of incarcerated people, abuse of children, the list goes on. Sometimes it can feel like the world is in a bleak state, like those in positions of power aren't looking out for the vulnerable. It can get to a point where I feel so sad and hopeless, I have to turn it off. I've been called overly sensitive in my life more times than I could possibly count, but this kind of news really hurts my heart. One of the things I do to comfort myself in these times is to remember that God put me where I am and gave me the possibly oversensitive heart that he gave me for a reason. I know I can't solve any of the huge problems in our world or fix things for vulnerable populations, but if I think hard, I can usually come up with one small thing that I, as an individual, can do to help. Sometimes that looks like giving a donation. Sometimes it's writing a letter or calling a representative. Sometimes it's reaching out to help a single individual that I know is struggling. Soon after I became a member at Aldersgate, I heard that Joe Lee was putting together a committee to help the church decide whether or not we wanted to become a reconciling church. This is a cause very near to my heart, and I knew I needed to be part of it. Throughout the process, I was blown away by the passion for equality I saw and heard from our members and the open, honest conversations that people were comfortable having with each other. Aldersgate is truly a place where people can speak their mind and know that they will be listened to. When I heard we had voted in favor of becoming reconciling, I cried, remember, sensitive, but this time it was in the very best way. Did we end the persecution of our LGBTQIA siblings with that vote? No. But we made our church a safe place for those people and started conversations that will hopefully go on to enact even more change. The scripture I read earlier calls us to not lose heart with the state of the earthly world and talks about the eternal house that awaits us in heaven. I know from listening to sermons at Aldersgate that we believe we are trying to bring as much of that heavenly home to earth as we can. I am so proud to be part of a church family that looks out for the vulnerable. When we provide meals for the needy, when we take special offerings, when we reach out to each other, when we proclaim that all are welcome here, we bring that heavenly home closer. So, if you find the state of our world overwhelming at times, and I think we all do, remember we are called to help the vulnerable. And while we can't fix everything at once, the small actions we take can add up to a big change. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye, church!